Hi friends, for today's video I am extra excited because I'm going to be reading to you guys a short story that I wrote when I was like 11 years old. I've read a couple of my other short stories on my channel before but then I always get self-conscious about it and I take them down. But this particular one is quite spooky. I believe it's also Halloween related but it's spooky nonetheless. Spooky. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoy this story. I hope you get a laugh or two from it and if you enjoy it let me know and I will read the other three that I have. So this particular story is called Condemned Hotel and we're just gonna get right on into it. There is a table of contents. There's 10 chapters, but don't worry. It is not a long story. So without further ado, let's get into the story time. So chapter one, weather below surface. The visitors made a dash for the fire escape, red flames flying all over. General Watson had gotten the army here, but like they could do anything about it. A screeching laughter was heard from down the hall. Men, women, and children all hurried along the corridor to the exit, but by the time they reached it, it was locked. The future of some could have... <laughs> the future of some could have ended for them right now. White streaks with faces flew around the visitors. Screams and yells could have been heard a mile away. But who were these creatures, and what did they want? Well, the story begins back into 1921. Carla and Adriana were sisters. They walked up to the <laughs> They walked up to the forgotten past hotel. They thought about how many people died there because of the accident. The girls had always known about the hotel, but their mother warned them never to enter that hotel. It was still open for business, yes. But after that year in 1871, their mother was so scared that she would never let those girls enter the hotel unless there was someone with them. The girls knew very well to listen to their mother. She was very nice to them and everyone else. She didn't get mad very easily, but she did get scared easily. The girls went up with their school friends. The year is 2000, by the way. Marissa, Glenn, Kayla, and Ben all walked up to Carla and Adriana. Hey, Carla. Hi, Adriana, said Glenn. We were all just thinking of entering the Forgotten Past Hotel for night. Do you girls want to come? My dad is coming along with us, so we won't have to necessarily be alone. What do you think? Marissa asked. I don't know, Marissa. My mom never lets us even go in the pool in that hotel there, Carla answered. Really? That bites. But are you sure you can't come? Ben asked. Well, we'll ask our mom and then we'll give you the answer, Adriana told them. Well, you have until Saturday to decide, Kayla said. Okay, the girls answered and turned to walk home. Chapter 2. Permission. Mom will never let us go, Carla told her sister as they walked up the porch stairs to the door. Carla opened it to find her mother making supper. Hello, girls, she said with a warm smile. Mom, we had a question to ask you, Adriana said. Yeah, and what would that be, she asked. Well, to start off, Kayla, Marissa, Ben, and Glenn invited us to a sleepover, and we were wondering if we could go, Adriana started. Whose house are you staying at? Their mother asked, not looking at her. Um, that place would be dot dot dot. The Forgotten Past Hotel, she said. What? You are not going to that hotel. Do you know what happened there? She asked them with a mother look on her face. Yes, Carla finally spoke up. The hotel where ghosts and goblins were <laughs> and swooped all through the hotel, Carla said rolling. <laughs> Carla said rolling eyes. Don't you roll your eyes at me, young lady, she said sternly. She hesitated for a second and then turned to face the wall. <laughs> I was one of those visitors in that time, and I got chased around the hotel by ghosts or something of the devil, her mother said. But why can't we go? That hasn't happened for like over 20 years, Adriana told her mother. It's not like there's going to be anything wrong with it now, she assured her mother. See, back when I was 11, I wasn't very good with time. So we have three different dates here, 2000. 1921 and like 1870 or something. Kind of confusing timeline here. Well, I guess so, she said. You can go, but if anyone's getting hurt or anything's happening, I want you to run out of that hotel and run straight home. That's what I did. The girls agreed and picked up the phone and told their friends that they were going to come. Chapter 3. The Hotel Carla and Adriana gazed around the Forgotten Past Hotel, and it was beautiful and big, like one of those resorts in a big city. They soon met up with their friends and Marissa's dad and checked into one big suite. After, they played in the pool for hours. Once they were clean and dry, they went out for supper. But once they came back, it wasn't very ordinary. Once back inside the hotel room, 
Everything was different. Their stuff wasn't in neat piles on the floor. It was all messy, and their stuff was thrown all over the place. What happened in here? asked Kayla. Who knows? Maybe it was just the manager looking for something. Ben said, unsurely. I don't know. You kids stay here and I'll go check with the manager. I'll be right back. Marissa's dad left and they watched him get into the elevator and go down. They were all kind of scared. Ten minutes later, Mark, Marissa's dad, showed up and told them the news. <laughs> the truth is, kids, is that this hotel is haunted with some ghost from the 1870s, he began. Legend has it that it comes out every 20 years, and that day is today. All of the kids look frightened, but Carla and Adriana just stood back and looked doubtful. We got some skeptics in our midst here. There's no such thing as ghosts, Carla told everyone later that day. Yeah, they're just made up things that people say to frighten people, Adriana told them. But they looked... But the others looked doubtful. I don't know, you guys. It does seem real. Like, who would come in and tear through our stuff in our room when we have the keys? Kayla asked them. She's right, you know. Who would come through our stuff? Ben asked. It was probably the hotel manager looking for a lost key or something, Carla said. But the manager said that he didn't come through here. Plus, he doesn't bother people unless there's something wrong, Glenn told them. Yes, but you know what? I don't really have an explanation for this happening. But I know there's no such thing as a ghost, Carla said. She turned to face her sister, but to her surprise, she looked scared too. Adriana, what's wrong? Carla asked her. Adriana pointed to the figure behind them. What's that? Adriana asked, scared. Ah, they all screamed. They all ran back to the hotel and told Mark what happened. It looked like some kind of a uh, ghost figure, Marissa said to the manager. Yeah, and it had eyes like fiery red ones, Kayla told him. You people, I'm sorry for what happened, but I cannot claim a police or mystery report until I have evidence, the manager said. Chapter 4, Solid Proof. As Carla, Adriana, Marissa, Kayla, Glenn, and Ben roamed around the hotel with a video camera, wondering what to do. That was until they saw it. The same figure standing in between the party room and the restaurant doors. He gave them the same fiery eyes. Glenn got a bit of him on tape. He gave a loud, scary laugh and disappeared into the wall. We just saw him again, and we didn't even get him on camera. Don't be so sure about that, Glenn said as he held up the camera. It's all on tape. They all cheered and ran down the hall to the elevator as they were happy that they had some solid proof. They rushed down the main lobby to the front desk and asked for the manager. The man came out and told them, look, if you ain't got any proof, I have cho <laughs> Look, if you ain't got any proof, I have choice then not to deal with it. As he turned to go back in his room, Adriana stopped him. Wait, we have solid proof that the ghost had been here. She took the tape out of the camera and gave it to the manager. He put it in the VCR and pressed play. Clearly this is dated. <laughs> he viewed the video and when it was done, he turned to face the kids with a ghostly look on his face. You kids were right. There is a ghost in this hotel and we will have to shut it down if this figure keeps showing up, he said. The kids were scared. After they tried to calmly explain to Mark what happened, after he also viewed the tape, he was scared also. Chapter 5, Ghostly Visitors. <laughs> after, Kay <laughs> after Carla and Adriana sat down in the kids' club room in the hotel, a very cold feeling swept by them. But there was no wind today, plus they were inside. Soon after, the kids in the pool, which included Kayla and Ben, felt... <laughs> The water turned from 85 degrees Fahrenheit down to 30 degrees. Then they heard a roaring laughter. Ha 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 ha. The laughter continued on for several minutes until the manager walked in. Who was making that laughter in here? He asked the children sternly. No one was, Mr. Greeley. It was the ghost, a girl named Myra said. Seriously? Mr. Greeley asked. The children all nodded. He could see they weren't lying because they had no trace of laughter or smile on them, just frightenedly looks on their faces. As Carla, Adriana, Kayla, and Ben left the kids club, they were walking on the main lobby and went onto the elevator. They clicked on level five, which was the top floor, and got off. On their way down the corridor, they heard footsteps, loud footsteps that were on the roof, and no one is allowed on the roof, for there is no way to get up. I'm a big fan of run-on sentences. As they continued to hear the footsteps all the way to their room, they stopped as the door slowly opened. What the? Kayla said. That is so weird, Adriana said. Let's check it out, Ben said. No, we shouldn't. That room could be haunted, Adriana said. 
I think we should check it out, Carla said. Besides, who's scared of a little adventure and mystery? They all smiled and took a crazy chance and walked into the room. It was the same as any other room. Two beds, a mini fridge, a TV, a counter, and two bedside tables. Just the lights weren't on. Just as Kayla reached for the light switch, a ghostly presence filled the room. <laughs> Carla, Adriana, Kayla, and Ben stood silent and still as they watched the white and orange glows fly around the room. It was so scary. Just as they turned to leave, they couldn't move. Their arms and legs were paralyzed. They tried to scream but couldn't. Only a whimper came out. They were scared, that they could admit, but all they did was stand there. Carla tried to move, but when she did, she couldn't move any more than she could before. A chill ran down her spine. Adriana looked over to her sister. Her cold blue eyes cast a scary look onto the spirits who were flying around the abandoned room. Again, the four kids heard footsteps, but not on the roof, on the floor, coming closer and closer to them. A voice startled them and took them out of paralyzation. It was Mark, Marissa, and Glenn. They stared also at the spirits, which flew around the room. Kayla and Ben didn't want what happened to them to happen to Mark and Marissa and Glenn. They pushed them out of the way and shut the door. This was getting too weird. Chapter 6. Getting to the point. Adriana decided to go to the library the next day. She found a few books on supernatural ways, but nothing. Then this book she saw told her that told her that it was the answer. Forgotten Past Hotel, The Mystery of General Watson's Ghostly Appearances. Adriana was in luck. She read the first few chapters to find this. As General Watson's army came to the ghostly presence at the Forgotten Past Hotel, the supernatural feelings were too unorthodox. He rushed inside to get the remaining people out of there. That was until the fire caught sight of him. <laughs> The air rushed the fire in a straight line. The visitors dashed past him, all of them except for little John. He ran from the fire and scooped him up and ran... He ran from the fire and scooped him up and ran him outside. Something caught him and dragged him back inside the hotel room number 2244. As the light shut off, general screams and yells gave the people chills as the fire swept over him. In a split second, general wasn't alive anymore. <laughs> He was dead, a ghost for all eternity. Adriana was very scared after she read that. She knew now who the ghost was, but she had to see him and help him finish <laughs> and help him finish his unfinished business. Adriana soon found herself back at the room 2244, which she and her friends were still paralyzed. She walked straight into the room and said loudly and confidently, General Watson, this is Adriana Cornell. I know you died here, and I know that you wanted to save all of those who were here, and you forgot the two children from your life, Sarah and Corey Watson. They are alive and well with their mother, your wife. She rescued them from the blazing fire. They are 15 and 16 now. You do not have to worry. They are safe. As Adriana turned to leave, she heard a voice. Stop! She turned around to see General Watson's ghost standing by the closet. My children and wife are safe, he asked. Yes, Adriana told them. They are safe and well. You don't have to worry anymore. They are safe. General Watson bowed his head and said silently, I am sorry for causing so much trouble and scaring you all. He began. At that same moment, Mark... Carla, Ben, Kayla, Glenn, and Marissa stood by the doorway. You do not have to worry anymore. I will now leave you all alone. Please tell my children about me. Thank you, Miss Cornell. As she smiled, General Watson turned away and he disappeared. <sighs> Chapter 7, No More Ghosts. Everyone is happy now that there, was, that there was no more ghosts or spirits, but everyone was still assured that he was bad. Adriana was now on the cover of magazines and newspapers, but Adriana didn't care about that. She was proud that she finally proved to her mom that she was capable <laughs> <laughs> that she was capable of more than what she was sure her daughter could only do. <laughs> what? Carla was happy with her sister's behavior and everything. <laughs> You were awesome to take care of General Watson and telling him that his family was okay, Carla said to her sister as they walked home from the Forgotten Past Hotel. Thanks, but I think he deserved more than a your family is alive and well. He needed, um, well, I don't know, but something better than that, Adriana said. Chapter 8, Memories. The girls knew that they were scared of ghosts before in the hotel, but they found out all the keys and secrets to the end of the mystery. <laughs> The next day, they took their mom and went back to the Forgotten Past Hotel. Their mom was scared and didn't want to come. She still didn't really believe the story the girls were telling her. As she walked up to the main lobby to check in, they saw white and orange spirits 
above flying around. Now they welcomed ghosts. Kind of stupid, but not really. As they walked down the corridor, they saw the place where she and several other people, men, women, and children, were running and ended up at the locked fire escape. She could still remember the screeching laughter and the screams. She was trying hard to stay calm, but all of these memories were stressing her out. She started down the hall again with her daughters and saw room 2244, where General Watson had died. She looked inside the room. It was still the way she had remembered it, for she was the person whose room General Watson had died in. The girls got chills up their spine as they entered their room 2206. They sat down and their mother told them the story. It started out in 1967 when I was 20. I had heard the stories about the ghosts and things in 1921, but I wasn't scared of a few stories. So that night, everything went wrong. The fire stopped, the heating dropped, and everyone heard that laughter. It was too close for comfort as the white and orange things flew above. Everyone was dashing around trying to find a fire escape. It was no use. They were all locked, even the emergency exits. Everyone was scared, especially me. I was trying to run out of the building until I was trapped by the fire escape with a whole bunch of people as the red flames on the ghost swirled around us. We all thought it was the end until General Watson came to rescue us. We all hurried outside and as we heard the laughter go on and on after 10 minutes, we heard General Watson's screams and yells in pain. After it all, we all went upstairs. There was no more fire, no more ghosts. Just the general's body lying there on the floor. He was burnt to a crisp. We were all very, we were all very frightened. Wow, that's a scary and sad story, Mom, Carla said. Thanks for telling us, Adriana said. Their mother smiled as they got up to go to the restaurant downstairs. <laughs> Chapter 9, Moving Away. Carla and Adriana waved to their friends as they drove off with their mother to another town. <laughs> they were moving to Winchester, Ontario. <laughs> they thought about the hotel and everything that had happened. All their memories and childhood dreams were left in their childhood home. As they turned to face their new town, they couldn't help but glance back. They were going to miss this place. <laughs> This was our child at home, our dream maker town, our friends, Carla said. Don't worry, we'll make new friends in Winchester, Adriana told Carla. As Adriana and Carla stepped out of the car, they stared at their new house in Winchester. A, f a few months had passed and the girls had made lots of friends. They had really made a good deal here in Ontario. But one night on the news, they heard this. Hello, I'm Melanie Van Heist, and tonight this hotel called Forgotten Past Hotel is now condemned for the use of drug addicts. <laughs> the spirits which are said to haunt this building scared many visitors. The manager could not stand to have any more scares in his hotel, so he shut it down. This hotel is now condemned. The girls were kind of mad at the news about the hotel, but they couldn't but they knew they couldn't do anything about it. Chapter 10, The Ending. Carla and Adriana still thought about the hotel, but they tried to push it out of their system, for they lived in a new town with new people and new friends. They loved it here and didn't want to move. As months and years went by, Carla and Adriana still thought about New Hampshire, <laughs> their hometown, and didn't mind if it was condemned because they practically saved the hotel. <laughs> Um, one night in the summer, when Carla and Adriana were outside, they thought. They thought about everything that had happened in their lives and wouldn't give it up for the world. The end. I hate myself. <laughs> have a heart attack. Well, there you go. That was the New York Times number one bestseller list short story called Condemned Hotel written by 11 year old me who clearly thought she was doing something. <laughs> Please let me know your thoughts about the story in the comments. <laughs> Please do not drag me too hard like I said I was 11. <laughs> but yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this story and as always, thank you so much for watching my videos and I will see you in the next one. Bye!